productivity. It's what developers and your customers are striving to achieve. It's especially critical when you need to deliver user experiences across a variety of devices and platforms. And if you're a developer or a designer in this situation, then this is the session for you. Hi, my name is Paul Yilday. I'm a program manager, and I specifically work on Fluent UI. And I'm Chigusa Sansen. I'm a program manager working on WinUI and Windows apps. Cool. So Chigusa, how about we run the viewers through kind of what we're going to be talking about today? Yes. Here are three topics we covered today that will help you be more productive. Fluent design system that simplifies your life as an app creator. Things you get from us to build your UX with Fluent offerings. Then Design Director Benedict will be joining us to give us the sneak peek of future direction of Fluent. So Paul, I don't think everyone here who is watching this video knows what Fluent Design System is. So why don't we start with a high-level overview of what Fluent Design System is? Sure, I'd love to. So uh, the Fluent Design System has been around. For those of you who, who don't know it, it's the way that Microsoft is evolving to speak a common language uh, across our shared design system. And we're doing this so that we can deliver products across a broader set of platforms. It's our collective approach, and it's really focused on creating simplicity and coherence. And Fluent brings the fundamentals of principal design. It allows us to innovate with technology, and it allows us to, to deliver customer needs together as one big team. Now, Fluent and the Fluent design system isn't just for Microsoft. We think about it as an open ecosystem and an open design system, meaning it's the foundation and the shared DNA that you can actually infuse your own brand identity with to deliver your own user experiences across the same set of platforms that we do today. And so I'm gonna to touch in just a little bit deeper on what exactly that you get with the Fluent Design System. So at the base level, uh, you get design fundamentals. Now, this is table stakes. And we think of design fundamentals as sort of the, the core design principles and the patterns and the universal design elements that you can use as, as a designer. Um, we think of these as like, typography, iconography, spacing, color palette, shadows, elevation, all this great stuff that's defined by our, our fundamental design language. Now, if you're a designer, um, there's a series of design toolkits that are available for you to build out user experiences for a variety of platforms and for a variety of devices. If you're a developer, we have a ton of UI libraries that allow you to build those designs and those experiences using a bunch of frameworks and languages that, that you already know. And finally, you have a set of documentation. We think of this as like the hub of all of our samples and our examples, our reference API documentation. And it's sort of the jumping off point for you to learn more about our style guide, all of those design toolkits that I talked about earlier, and get sort of an update on what's new and what's evolving with the Fluent Design System. Because the Fluent Design System isn't a static thing. It evolves and changes over time. And so we believe that these, these are the... the essential things that you should understand with the Fluent Design System. Now, uh, Chiguza, why don't, uh, why don't you tell us why folks watching this session should actually be using Fluent? Why should they be using Fluent? That's a great quote, Paul. Today, our users use multiple devices, and sometimes they use multiple devices at the same time. Fluent thinks of these scenarios of multi-device use and provides the following three benefits to you. First, we respect strengths of native experience while bringing unique Fluent essentials. Second, Fluent is all about building coherent and productive experiences. Third, Fluent simplifies your processes from design all the way to code. Cool, now, Julia, could you just give us a little bit more detail and what does that mean to actually be native to a platform, but at the same time, same time feeling uniquely fluent? Yes. It means that we respect the established behaviors and elements and controls that are native to the device so that users who are used to using those devices in a certain way do not have to learn new things with fluent apps. For the while, we make sure that the users feel they are using apps from the same fluent family. We call this 80-20% rule. 
These are not specific values per se, but what it means is that for the majority of the cases, we respect Native experiences while bringing new, unique, and value-add functionalities and features that are uniquely fluent. But it's not just about one device anymore, Paul, right? Exactly, yes. And so a lot of the times when we think about delivering experiences to our customers that are coherent and productive, a lot of our customers, they start out on one device and they end up completing that task on another device. And in order to achieve that, they need to have user patterns that are familiar to them so that we can actually increase their productivity. Now, you as a developer and a designer, you need to rely on a set of rich UI libraries that enable you to create that native experience on those devices. But Paul, that seems daunting and super complex to have to build experiences for every device. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, and so we do have a set of customers that do choose to build per platform. But to your point, we are working on solutions that allow you to span across those platforms. And later on in the talk, I'm gonna detail out how we're actually supporting those things. But at the same time, we wanna simplify your developer experience on how we actually take the design and get that into our code. So let's dig in. So first off, let's talk about the naming. Um, we heard your feedback and we understand that it was a little bit confusing on what UI libraries actually supported the Fluent design system. Well, today, you only need to remember two things, Fluent UI and WinUI. So we renamed all of the UI libraries to Fluent UI to align with the Fluent design system naming. However, if you look at WinUI, we decided not to rename this because it already had an established community with it, and we didn't want to just change it for a change sake. And so we believe and we feel that WinUI is just part of the Fluent Design System family. So we kept that name. Now, I'm here to announce a new product that's broadening out our platform support so that if you're a developer that is focused on delivering native experiences for every platform, we now have Mac OS support. This is brand new. And I'll be talking a little bit later on in our, uh, in our deck about what support you actually get with this, this, new, uh, with this, this new UI library. Now, to Jagusa's earlier point, you might look at this, all of these boxes and all these tech stacks and say, oh my gosh, I have to like manage all this complexity. I'm also here to announce Fluent UI React Native. And this allows you to build cross-platform experiences across all of these native platforms uh, that we have available for you today. Now that we explained why is Fluent, how about we dig into these UI libraries so that audiences can find out what they exactly get. Perfect, yes. Let's dig in. We'll start with the web, we'll talk about Windows, and then we'll finish up with, uh, with mobile. So let's dive right in. So if you are familiar with uh, UI Fabric, Fluent UI React is exactly the same thing. Like I mentioned before, we did a bunch of renaming to uh, alleviate some of that complexity and the confusion around uh, the Fluent Design System and UI libraries that actually support it. Um, and so this is in production today. If you look at the little pill on the uh, right next to the name, that'll give you sort of an indication of the release cycle that this current product is in. So this is Fluent UI React. It's used by a bunch of Microsoft 365 applications, Word, PowerPoint, Excel, uh, SharePoint, OneDrive, like you name it. We we have some uh, we have some uh, we have some involvement in building those those actual those actual products. Um, we have around 70 plus components that allow you to build Office add-ins, SharePoint frameworks add-ins, and your own productive web apps. And if you want to learn more, uh, you can go to our new GitHub repository location uh, there, there on the screen. So let's dig in a little bit more on Fluent UI React Native. This is in alpha, so this is like brand new. Um, this allows you, like I said before, to build cross-platform experiences across Windows, Mac, iOS, and Android using the React Native technologies. Um, the benefit of Fluent UI React Native is that it has the Fluent Design System baked right in. But at the same time, we're respectful to your own brand identity, and it is fully custom customizable. And when we talk about cross-platform, we want to talk about code reuse, and we also want to talk about shared coding concepts. And so if you're familiar with React and the React Native technologies, Fluent UI React Native is built on those same principles that allow you to, to share those coding concepts across 
those two different technologies. And you can learn more at our, our GitHub repository there. So Paul, if folks want to find out more about React Native, is there any talk or something like that at Build they can catch? Yes, there is a, there is a session. It's a SK119. It's called React Native Build Cross-Platform Apps that target Windows, Mac, and more. And it's really focused on sort of the fundamental core principles of React of the React Native technology. So I highly encourage people to, to go view that session to learn more about the building blocks of React Native that Fluent UI is, uh, is built on top of. And just to hit it home, here are some of the, the new components that we have available today uh, in that. So go to our GitHub, let us know what you think, give us feedback. We're really interested in building a community around this product. So now what I'm going to show you next is a demo where we take Fluent UI React, Fluent UI React Native, and we take that cross-platform on Windows and Mac OS. I'm on my Windows desktop. I have uh, Visual Studio Code open. Inside of Visual Studio Code, I have my Fluent UI React project and my Fluent UI React Native project. And I already have those running. So if you look inside of my, uh, my terminals here, you can see that they're running in the background. And so this will uh, allow me to do uh, live code reload. And so the experience that we're going to be working with today is sort of this account switcher uh, experience. Um, this might look kind of similar to other account uh, switching experiences that you've seen in our products today. And we're going to hone in specifically on this, this section right here, this, uh, this persona uh, section. And so um, we're going to try to take this, this sort of like uniquely fluent uh, kind of layout uh, the component and um, replicate that and bring that to uh, our Windows native platform and the native Mac OS platform. And so if you are familiar with React, and if you're familiar with UI Fabric, um, then this should look very straightforward to you. Um, this is you know, kind of standard React code. I have some hooks here just to do the visibility. Um, you can see we have our standard components out of Fluent UI React. So we have a stack component, our default button. You can scroll down here. There's the, the call out. That's the little uh, the thing that hosts this sort of account switching experience. Um, and some stacks for layout, and then the persona. And so just to kind of show that this is like, you know, a real live, real live code, um, I'm going to change the size of the persona component. Um, and when that's all done, it should be a little bit bigger. And lo and behold, it is. Cool. All right, so I am going to uh, set that back to its original size. And now I'm going to replicate that experience across uh, Windows and Mac using React Native. And I'm not going to do this with like a magic, you know, copy and paste code demo in the same file. No, I'm not going to do that. Um, what I am going to do, though, is I'm going to look through this through the lens of learn once and, and write anywhere. And these are the same, you know, philosophies and principles uh, that come along with uh, using React and React Native. And so the first thing I think about when I need to go learn something new is I think about documentation. So let me click over here. This is a preview of our, our uh, latest website for Fluent UI. Uh, you can see all the various platform support that we have for all of our Fluent UI libraries. Um, but specifically, I want to learn about this persona component that we just, uh, we just modified on the web. So let me click that. Uh, so I have control, my list of controls here. I think we have like around 70 plus controls. There's a bunch of controls inside of here. But I'm interested in the persona uh, specifically. And so you can see here, um, it is way more than just sort of a, a circle with an image and some text. Um, there's a lot of predetermined sizes that look really good when it's sort of uh, sitting next to the different uh, typography uh, ramps that we have associated with that. So if there's more text, like the name gets bigger and it has more lines. It's, it's pretty cool. Um, also, it also does stuff with initials. And so depending on the amount of information that you give, um, it can figure out the right you know, initials to, to kind of do that in the background. We have various colors, a whole bunch of stuff. We have custom ways to render uh, the images. There's like a whole bunch of stuff here. And so this is one of the main reasons why you should be using Fluent UI um, specifically, because if you want to build any sort of like account experience, we have a lot of that functionality already built into you, uh, already built into uh, for you today. Um, and so you can see here, it has pretty extensive kind of um, uh, interfaces and property interfaces. And so that's what I'm sort of interested in here is sort of like learning about the sort of the, the, the properties that we have here. Um, and so now what I want to do is I want to think about how would I learn about this new component about cross-platform. So if we click over cross-platform, you can look, hey, look, there's that persona component. I've already kind of queued this up for you, as you can see. 
um, there's that persona component. And lo and behold, it has a bunch of uh, properties and um, uh, interfaces for me to sort of understand. And the, the names of the properties kind of, you know, they, they look the same. And so our teams are working really hard together. And all of the teams that are contributing to all of those UI libraries across Fluent UI to sort of standardize on component naming, uh, component uh, anatomy, and sort of property uh, property interfaces, right? They're not going to all be exactly the same, but we want to make them so that you as a developer are really efficient when you start to move across these different libraries, and especially when you want to build cross-platform experiences that span across those platforms specifically. So cool. So we just saw um, a sneak peek at sort of our, our documentation. So let's hop over back into Visual Studio Code, and let's specifically look at our, uh, our Fluent UI React Native project. And actually, if I do this, let me see if I can pull it up here. Good. So now you can see it down here on the bottom. Um, it's sort of this unfinished experience. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take this persona um, that we have here, and we're going to put it inside of here. And so I'm going to do that using the other way that I learned, um, and that's IntelliSense. So I'm going to type persona here. I do have some uh, primary some account details sort of like already done, so you don't have to watch me type that. Um, but size, that was one of those properties that I changed earlier, so size 72. Um, let's see, what do we want to add? Let's add some presence. I think I had it so that I was online. Uh, there was some tertiary text, and that was my Microsoft, oops, Microsoft account. Oh, I can't spell today. Um, and then finally, oh yeah, the image, yeah. So image URL. And then I have that already kind of like pre-baked and handy for me. Cool. And let me add my ending tag. I think that's it. So let me hit save. And so that's uh, hot reloading. Let me look at the, the debugger here to make sure that we actually have something going. Okay, good. Uh, we do. And lo and behold, there is our persona component inside of our React native uh, application using Fluent UI React. And so now all I need to do is uh, commit these changes and uh, push them to my GitHub uh, repository, and then pull that back down on my Mac machine and see what happens when I load up my React Native uh, application uh, on my Mac. So uh, we'll see you there. So now I'm on my Mac device, and you can see that I have my Fluent UI React Native project already running uh, so that we can do live code reload. So let me move over to Visual Studio Code. And you can see my project is in the same state it was when we first started on my Windows device. Um, but instead of actually typing in and completing this experience here with that persona component, all I'm going to do is I'm going to pull my changes from my GitHub repository. And with Live Code Reload, you can see that persona component uh, jump right into the screen. And, and that's the, the efficiencies that you get with using React Native and Fluent UI React Native, is that you have a high amount of code reuse uh, across those different platforms. So that's it. Um, I've demonstrated to you how you can bring your uh, investments from the web and using technologies like Fluent UI React, Fluent UI React Native, and bring that coherent experience to native platforms like Windows and Mac OS. So we just talked a lot about cross-platform. Uh, now let's move on and look at what's new in each of the, the native technologies that we have available. So Chaguza, can you give us an update on what's going on with, uh, with Windows development? Yes. As some of you already know, we have been shipping WinUI that embodies fluent design languages and principles, such as great accessibility and input support already built into all the controls and more. And today, I'm very happy to share that we are making WinUI available more than for just for UWP. What this means is that you can now build your app with technologies like Win32 while taking advantage of Fluent controls. And this is now available with WinUI 3 Preview 1 today. WinUI 3 is also used to power cross-platform technologies, such as React Native that Paul just talked about, that your app feels natural when it's running on Windows. Please visit our website to find out more. Now, Chiguza, are there any other live sessions happening uh, that we can learn more about WinUI? Yes. There is a talk my colleague Ryan and Miguel is doing titled 
everything you need to know about WinUI. And you can search for code int 116a through c. There, will, there you will be uh, finding out the rundown of the technologies and how it provides a path forward for improving and modernizing user experience in any Windows applications. So you might be wondering, what kind of controls do you get by using WinUI 3? It not only supports all of the UWP controls, but we also added controls that will help your app provide productive experiences to users, as well as some delightful technologies that you might already be using in some other platforms, but didn't exist in WinUI, like Lottie. Now, Chiguza, I know your team is really focused on backwards compatibility. And are these controls, are they only available in WinUI 3? That's a great question, Paul. Thank you for asking. These are available in WinUI 2 as well. We have been releasing new controls every three months or so, collaborating with our community members jointly to add controls that you want and have asked. And if you are UWP customers, you can use them today. Now, let me show you a demo where you can find out how Win32 app can use WinUI 3. So this is a Win32 Win app running WinUI 3 for building its modern UX and UI experiences. How do I know this app is Win32? Let me show you. This dialog shows you the modules that are loaded. And there are a lot of System32 at play here. And this is content dialog. It uses a shy scroll bar that you might have seen in the past current talks. And you don't need to do any additional work to get this control. And because this is WinUI, you can switch light and dark theme very easily to participate in the Fluent theme behavior. Let's run inspect folders. Using the number box here, I can easily change the level of folder structures to up and down. Number box control in WinUI is an example of one of the menu controls we recently modernized in WinUI. It works great not only with mouse like you see here, or you can type in and use keyboard, or you can also use touch and any other input that we support. It even has a built-in functionality where you can enter mathematical questions, then it resolved it for you in line. And this area, because it's a text block, it provides you with the command bar flyout control that gives you select all option automatically. And it also gives you the copy option. And you don't have to do any work to do that. So this way, you can provide productive experiences to your users without you doing a lot of work yourself. This app is quite simple, as you can see. But you might want to give your users some hint as to how to use this app. You can easily add teaching tips to your UI to provide learnable opportunity to your app so your users don't have to search your help doc and be productive from the start. If you want to learn more about this app and how you might use Fluent WinUI 3 controls with your app, be sure to check out the talk I mentioned earlier with Ryan and Miguel. They will be using this demo and will be walking you through how this app is built in more depth. So that was the demo. And Paul, could you share what we've been up to on the mobile side and the new Mac OS support you mentioned earlier? Yes, definitely. So let's talk a little bit about mobile, um, specifically iOS and Android support. And so our UI libraries here, they're in production today. This allows you to build native mobile experiences using the Fluent Design Language. And if you're a designer, we also have mobile design toolkits available for you to design those user experiences. Now, if you're familiar with our mobile products today, uh, you'll now know notice dark mode support uh, across those products. And within these UI libraries, you both see, you see dark mode support both in our new components and our existing controls. And you can learn more about these two libraries at their respective GitHub repositories.
And Paul, these are the same controls that are used in uh, Microsoft 365 mobile apps. Oh, yes, sorry. Yes, these are the exact same components that we use today to build out our mobile experiences for uh, iPhone and Android today. And so just to give you kind of a, a look at what's available from the new control perspective, we've done a lot of work around sort of navigation and, and the drawer experience. And so you can see across iOS and Android, we have top and bottom navigation and drawers. And so now I'm going to move on to our last native, uh, native library, and that's Fluent UI Mac OS. And so this is an early alpha. It allows you to build native Mac OS experiences using the Fluent Design Language. Um, they're open source components that, like I said previously about mobile, uh, they're the same ones that we use internally for our own applications. And it also supports the variety of package managers for, for Mac OS. And you can learn more at the GitHub repository uh, at below. And so, Paul, is this available today? Oh, yeah, sorry. So this is like literally hot off the press. Um, there's not a ton in it right now. There's only a couple controls. So I want to do some expectation setting. But again, we want you to go to our GitHub repository, uh, give us your feedback, let us know what you want to see there as we want to start building a community uh, around this product. Now that you saw what we provide you to help with the coding steps, I want to bring Benedict Leonard, a director of design, to give us the fluent design vision and direction to make design to code seamless in the future. Benedict? Awesome. Thank you, Chigusa. So now that we've seen all this awesome new technology that we are providing for you to build um, seamless cross-platform uh, experiences, we'll talk a little bit about the future. And for us at Microsoft, and specifically with Fluent, we're really thinking about the world in a way that we know we live in a cloud-powered multi-device and cross-platform world. And so what it's really about is to enable seamless experiences that our customers can go from one device to the next and the next to get things done effortlessly. And so uh, in order to develop these kind of experiences, we not only want to develop great technology that you can use to build these experiences, we're really spending a lot of time about how, thinking about how designers can really influence these experiences and the code that results in it in a way that is super efficient as you're building out your, your experiences. And so in order to describe a little bit what you're about to see, we're gonna take a quick trip down memory lane. In the old days, uh, we know we all handed off these like heavy red lines to our developers from designer to developer and back. And with a lot of communication that everything we wanted to be built made it into the product the right way. Then a few years ago, modern design tools came along and they made it a lot easier for developers to go into the design files and inspect them and find the values they were looking for or for designers to extract the values and hand them over to developers. But what if there was a way to remove all of this back and forth and handing over? And so we spent a lot of time thinking about this layer of design to code. How can we make this as seamless as the experience itself. And so what we're about to show you is a very early sneak peek of um, a plugin and a workflow that we're working on that really allows designers to go into the experience that they're designing and handing that seamlessly into the developer workflow, into code, so that we can build cross-platform experiences super efficiently and seamless experiences for customers as a result of that. So with that said, let's roll the video and see a demo. This is a preview of the design to code experience we are looking to deliver in the future. The three pieces that make this demo possible are distribution of design values between design and engineering, our Figma plugin to author those tokens without leaving the design tool, and a pipeline infrastructure to deliver platform specific values to Fluent UI and WinUI. In Figma, I can use the plugin that we developed to assign design tokens to our UI. As you can see, when I change the accent color, the changes apply to all the buttons that are assigned this design token. Even other parts of the UI that map to the same token receive the same update, like the header in this example iOS app. I can also change the border radius 
of a button using the appropriate token. As you can imagine, the possibilities are endless. Tokens enable us to edit any property of our designs and save that information in a way that is machine readable. Now when I hit export, the plugin outputs tokens that are platform agnostic, which makes them interoperable across Fluent UI and WinUI. Our pipeline translates these tokens into platform specific values at build time. Here is the compiled CSS for web, XAML for Windows, and Swift for iOS. Now I will show you what the output looks like in web and in iOS. And in Windows. All of this happened with no manual code changes. We think that this plugin will help in building a more efficient and consistent experience across platforms and bring design closer to code. We hope that you are as excited about this as we are. We think this is a game changer for not only the way designers and developers will be able to really seamlessly and efficiently work together, but really the end result of all of this will be more coherent, more seamless cross-platform experiences for all our customers and for all of your customers. And we would love to get your involvement, get your feedback, get your ideas on how we can make this better. That's why we're showing an early sneak peek. And what's more, we have our recent blog post that goes a little bit more into detail as to what we're envisioning um, and also really asking for your engagement because really we can only make this work with all of you designers and developers building these cross-platform experiences together. So thank you, and we're super excited to hear all your feedback. Thank you, Benedict. Today, you found out how Fluent Design System help you be productive app developer. You can build natural and productive experiences on all your devices using the resources we shared. You saw a preview of how we are thinking how to improve the design to code process in the future. So what are the resources available today for people to take a home, Paul? Yeah, so here's just a few related videos and live sessions. Um, if you wanna learn more about the fundamentals of React Native, I highly recommend the React Native talk. If you are a developer and you wanna build data-infused uh, experiences using Fluent UI, go learn about the Fluid framework and learn the fundamentals about how to build experiences that are collaborative and then layer on uh, Fluent UI on top uh, to build those truly end-to-end -end experiences. And then as Shiguza talked about before, if you want a deep dive on all things WinUI, go visit that, that live session. And if you want to learn more about Fluent UI and WinUI, we have a whole ton of open source GitHub repositories for you to go to, to to learn more. So go there, engage with the community, give us feedback, submit a PR. Um, we really want to build a community around each and all of these products. You can reach out to us on Twitter, you can visit our respective websites, and you can go visit our blogs to learn more exactly on what's the what's going on with the Fluent Design System and what's going on with our, our UI libraries. And connect with us. You can follow us uh, on Twitter, you can follow Microsoft 365 Dev. Well, that about wraps it up. Uh, thank you, Chaguza. Thank you, Paul. And thank you viewers for sticking around for our session and stay safe.